Hello, in this video we are going to be covering rotating our bird because if you have a look when I click play, move up and down but it doesn't rotate when we, so when we press it and we start flying it will rotate up and then when it's falling it should start rotating down. So that's what we're going to be implementing in this video. So go to your definitions file as usual and we want to add one define which is for the rotation speed and this is going to be 100.0f again it's just a value that I've experimented with and I've, and I've found that this works very very well you can modify it as you please and now go to your bird.hpp so in the bird.hpp we don't need any more methods but what we do need is some more properties down here. So we've got the bird state. That's fine. We're going to have a rotation value. So rotation angle. So rotation. And now go to your bird CPP file. And in here, you go to your constructor at the start. So after we do all the set position stuff, we can leave that as it is and then after we've actually set the bird state to still what we want to do is create a sf vector 2f of origin equals sf vector 2f and this is going to just be equal to bird sprite dot get global bounds dot width divided by two we're going to do the same for the y position for the origin and you might be wondering why are we doing this and the reason is any sort of transformation we do is relative to the origin for stuff like movement you can't really notice the difference too much but something like rotation if we if our origin is in the top left you will rotate around that point we don't want that we want it rotating around the center of the object Hence why we're changing the origin down here. So we just do bird sprite equal, I mean dot set origin. And this will be equal to the origin variable that we just created. And just finally initialize the rotation angle to zero by default. And now we can start scrolling down. If we go to our update method so down here we've got some pretty simple stuff at the moment but we need to add a bit more so the movement's fine but we're going to do underscore rotation and this is going to be plus equals rotation speed times by dt and what we're going to do is check if the rotation is greater than 25.0 f then we're going to restrict the rotation. So this just prevents it from just going all the way around because we only want it to look up or look down depending on whether it's flying or falling. And so we'll just do 25.0f. And what you can do is just experiment with these values again. I've experimented with them. I feel like these values are good. But if you want to make the bird rotate more or let less, feel free to experiment. And also, this is one of the things I didn't abstract into the definition file, into a hash define. But it's primed for something like that so feel free to do it that's as an extra task for you and now what we need to do is just set the rotation so underscore bird sprite dot set rotation set rotation underscore rotation and now we need to do something pretty similar for when you're flying so we go down here instead of doing plus equals we're going to do minus equals and instead of checking if it's greater than 25 we're going to check if it's less than negative 25 and then we restrict it to negative 25 and now we don't need to do anything within here and that is fine as well we also need to go to our cpp file so if we go to the CPP file, and when I say CPP, I mean GameState.CPP. So if we go to our GameState.CPP, actually, no, nah, we don't need to do anything here. We can just start running it now, and we should have a rotating bird. So let's see what we get.
So there we go. We have a rotating bird, which is really, really cool. So let's just look at all the, that's definitely a hard part to do. Obviously it wouldn't be this hard because we've made the spawn frequency of the pipes really low. So it just spawns a lot of them. It spawns one every half a second. We, you wouldn't have it like that. But there you go. And tsk, it would create that sort of sound effect and it would flash white, which we'll be implementing all in a later video. So as a quick recap, we just, just did the rotation stuff right over here. And it's pretty simple stuff, really. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link with this video, which will take you to our GitHub page, which will have the source code from every part of this course. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Keep rotating.